All right, hey guys, sorry I haven't been able to do many videos with the new Model S with Hardware 4 yet, but I've been moving, so I've been busy, but um, as soon as I'm finished in a few days, we'll make lots of videos of FST in San Francisco with Hardware 4. Um, it hasn't been as good as Hardware 3, also because I'm using a little bit of an older version, but it's really not that much of a difference. If you switch from Hardware 3 to Hardware 4, you won't regret it. So, you know, there's been a lot of um, discussion of the uh, of the new controls, the stockless. So, let me show a little bit of that too. So, um, you can see it just says press to drive. So you can actually see that. Okay, behind me, there's not a path forward, and in front of me there is a path forward. So I don't even have to shift gears now, it's just in drive. So people make it out like it's more challenging, it's actually easier. There's actually less steps. Take me to the Walt Disney Family Museum. All right, let's go through the one roundabout that I know is in the area because everybody did say roundabouts are impossible with this new turn signal design. It takes a rocket scientist to figure out how to go through a roundabout. And, you know, obviously this isn't true because you can change songs, right? While you're going through a roundabout or making a turn. It's pretty easy to do that. So why shouldn't you be able to go through a roundabout? Does it require a little bit of adjustment? Yeah, for a few days maybe you need to reset your muscle memory. But then when you get the hang of it, it's completely natural. And you can see here I put on FSD, it put on the turn signal for me. And it signals and drives, and I don't actually have to do anything. So for the people who are kind of stressing about the yoke versus the round wheel, the turn signals versus the stocks. It's kind of a moot discussion at the end of the day because you're not going to have to drive. So it's a little bit silly to even argue about what the controls look like. They're becoming increasingly irrelevant. And why put tons of things that are unnecessary, right? The car works just fine without stocks. So why do you need to have these extra parts sticking out of the car that add cost, that add complexity, that add visual clutter? It's just sort of one more thing that can go wrong, one more thing that can break, that needs to get fixed. And in a self-driving future, no one's gonna be shifting gears. So we know the self-driving future's coming. We can already see this car can do most of the driving itself. So, why are we still putting on things that we know we won't need? It makes sense, absolutely, to continue to start removing them now. So, let's see. Maybe I'll just show you guys a little bit of manual driving since this part's pretty boring. So I got the yoke here, you know, it's pretty easy. And I can see, you know, right on the thing, there's a car coming, which is great. So I have a good sense of what's happening around me. And so let's say I want to change lanes. And uh, it's very simple. So what I do is I just take this, I signal, and then I change lanes. And then it's done. Instead of two steps, change lane and then uncancel the turn signal, it's just one. And if I want to turn on FSD, one touch, and I let go. So that's a huge improvement over doo doo, just one touch, and then it's an FSD mode. So for all the people who are saying, ah, oh, I don't know how to do a roundabout, or I don't know how to do a turn, you just press one button, it'll do it for you. And this is going to be just included on all cars by default in the future. There will be a really good free version of FSD. All right, so it looks like it wants me to go a different way. 
So I'm going to go over here to the left. You see how it was really easy for me to just hit the left uh, turn arrow without even looking? And it's actually nice, especially in a car like this where you have so much performance, so much power, you want to be holding the wheels because this thing just takes off. And did you notice how when I got into the left turn lane, the blinker stayed on? Whereas when I changed the lane, it turned off as soon as I finished the lane change, but it's actually smart enough to know that I'm in the left turn lane and to keep the blinker on. So really, really intelligent stuff here. The reason that, you know, Tesla can do this and make it such a great experience and others can't is because they have this advanced AI that's doing things like this, that is intelligently adapting the turn signals based on what you're doing. All right. Now we're clear to go, so I'm going to go ahead and make the turn. And now, sure enough, the turn signal is off. So I'm going to put it back into FSD mode now. It's rerouted, it wanted to go the other way, but now I've turned manually and decided to go this way. And it's intelligently figured out that I want to take this other route, and now it's going to take me in that direction. I can wipe the windshield right from the yoke without having to lift my hand up, which is also great. And here we are heading into the Presidio. Really impressive low light performance as you can see. It looks just as clear as daytime with these hardware 4 cameras, which is pretty impressive. And it's a rainy night here in San Francisco, the roads are wet doesn't seem to be phasing it, it is driving 100% comfortably. And we're heading up to our roundabout, so we'll go through the roundabout a couple times. Um, it's a small roundabout, but um, one, of the, one of the ones we have near here. Maybe I'll go down to Stanford later, which has a ton of roundabouts, and make some more videos about the stock list with the roundabouts. So first drive through the roundabout we'll do on FSD. Because I think that's what a lot of people struggle to understand, especially the Europeans, is the future is not us signaling in roundabouts or even holding the wheel in roundabouts. The car will do it itself. It might seem crazy today, but that is where we're heading. And that's really what's informing the design. Okay, so here we go, we got a roundabout, we got a bus, we got a police car, and the car just sort of intelligently waits, powers through, and did you see that? It put on the signals itself. I didn't have to touch anything, I didn't have to signal, I didn't have to touch the wheel, it did it itself. So that is the future. What Tesla has is not more difficult for roundabouts, it's actually easier. You're not going to have to touch anything. All right, so now let's go through manually and see what it's like to signal manually. So look at this. Signal left, signal right. Isn't that amazing? Even though the wheel is moving, I can still signal. Incredible, right? It, it took me a long time to figure out how to do it. No, it actually didn't. I mean, the turn signal's probably the hardest thing about the yoke. Okay, so here's a roundabout. I'm, I don't actually know what the proper way to signal in a roundabout is, but let's say I'm gonna signal that I'm going left. So now I got my wheel, I'm turning it all around, and then I decide I wanna go right. Boom, right? And it cancels automatically. So you can see that <laughs> even though the wheel is turned, it's just under your left thumb here, right? And because, because the the thing is a yoke, you kind of know where it is, right? So see here, left, left, right, left, right. Left, boom. It works. Might take a little bit of getting used to, but the way people are like, oh, how do I do it? How do I do it? It's like, you guys, 
it's really not that dramatic. Again, left. Right. Boom. So, I think people will be able to figure it out. And again, one touch for FSD. You approach a roundabout, you hit the button, it'll signal through that roundabout for you. And the software is just getting better and better and better all the time. So, for anybody who's nervous about the new stockless Tesla design, they're now bringing it to the Model 3, they're gonna bring it to the Model Y. Stockless is the future, obviously. The future is not self-driving cars with gear shifters and turn signals. These things are already becoming unnecessary the way the software can handle so much of this now. So don't worry about it. Some people are like, ah, I don't know if my wife will like it. She'll like it, okay? It's actually better. Once you get used to it, it feels so natural because again this thing just has crazy performance right so you can just fly around and look now I'm signaling that I want to go right I'm signaling I want to go left it's so easy I don't have to look up I don't have to lift up my hand I can just keep my hands entirely on the wheel focus on the road which you need to with the performance of this car and it's just so easy to signal the car is intelligent, and you don't even have to turn off the signal. It'll just intelligently turn it off for you. So try the stockless. Yes, it is weird. You do need to sort of rewire your muscle memory, especially if you're older, you've been driving for a long time, you're expecting stocks. But then once you get used to it, it's great. You're just flying around, you're controlling the car, and it just feels so natural. And you never have to lift your hands up. You can control everything you need right from here, your voice, your turn signal, your high beams, or with voice commands. So, yeah, stockless Teslas, they're great, give them a try. All right, one more time through the roundabout. Yeah, baby, look at that. 